Every spring, dedicated marathoners from across the world converge for one of the biggest events in running. It's a victory lap and celebration for racers and spectators alike. So it's time to hop on a plane and head east. This is a runner's weekend, the Boston Marathon 2024. What's going on? It is 9 a.m. here at the Firehouse in Newton, right around mile 17 of the Boston Marathon course. Today, I've got a taper long run for my race next week in London, and we're gonna run from here back to the finish line, and then we'll tack on a little bit at the end. It's raining, it's super windy out today. This is probably a bad idea, but let's try and get started. There are three main hills in the Newton Hills. Just finished the first one. Up to each one, there's a nice little bit of downhill to recover on. All right, getting ready for the second big hill. That was it. Now, we got mostly downhill from here back to the city. And here's where I'm gonna start my workout for today. Three miles at Gold Marathon. bunch of meetings scheduled for today. Meetings is kind of a weird word for it, but races like this bring a lot of people into town from all over the world, so it's a really great time to be able to try and catch up. First, some friends at ASICS talk about some fun adventures we're gonna be going on ahead of the Olympics. Just leaving the ASIC shop now. Some very fun discussions. Well, first, it was good to connect with some friends that were over there. Got to meet oh, some fans as well. Bro. Hey, what's going on? How are you? Doing good. I didn't Today? mess up your video. No, it's okay. It's cool. Now I'm going to go meet up my friend Dave, who is the co founder of Johnji. Good to see the bandit guys. Always love talking to them, but that's kind of how things go this week. Everyone's in a very small space and it's just friends everywhere. So getting from point A to B always takes a little bit of time. That's all right. Everyone kind of understands. How's it going? Yeah. Whoa! I 
uh, switch out in the booth. We got this messy happy here all the way from Thailand. Happy to see them finally get a chance to meet in person. Although I did see you on the course in New York last year, but that wasn't really meeting. Um, but thanks for meeting me here uh, for coffee. And it made it easy that I had kind of like meeting two different people back to back, but just in the same spot. And now I had a couple of coffees, so it's always really nice. While I got you here, you guys are both racing tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. Or on Monday? Yeah, well, tomorrow, yeah. Monday. Okay. Five K tomorrow. Oh, okay. We're doing the official one, and then yeah, Monday. Right. How are you guys feeling? Excited. Terrified. <laughs> How do you guys do with jet lag? Yeah, we're. I'm still struggling. Actually. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm in college and taking time to get over it because I was really ill in the lead up. Like I was oh. sick. Okay. So um, yeah, double whammy really. But yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. As much sleep as possible. Good food. Yeah. Okay. All right. And a bit of yeah. All right. There you go. Coffee sold. Nice. Cheers. Cheers. Good to meet you. All right, that was super fun to talk with Ben and Mary. I could have stayed there a lot longer, but I'm already running late. Now I gotta go back to the hotel room real quick. I'm gonna drop off some of these cameras and then I'm going to change real quick and get ready for the shakeout run with Ben Johnson. Let's go, let's go. Ooh. Thanks for the shakeout, Miles, man. Yeah, thanks for coming. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. That was a fun shakeout run with Ben Johnson and Sporting Guts. Now I'm gonna go meet Connor from Running Warehouse. We're gonna shoot some secret footage for later, which should be fun, but I'll see what I can show you guys for now. So the plan with Connor and the Running Warehouse team was to unveil a shoe to me that I had never seen before. Get in about 15 minutes of running around Boston Common and then do a super preliminary first reaction video. Now, I don't usually like to run in pre-production shoes, but running warehouse usually has to shoot months ahead of time. So in this case, it was fun for me to get in a sneak peek into the future and also to get in some miles with a friend. <laughs> All right, just finished up shooting a video with Running Warehouse that won't come out for four months. But this is pretty fun. Now I'm running late. I'm gonna get back to the hotel, drop off these shoes that I'm wearing because they're secret shoes. But then I'm gonna head over to meet my friends at Believe in the Rock. Taking over the street here with this event. It looks like they're heading out. I'm gonna sit this one out. I'll wait for everybody to get back. The king of running, king of everything that's great about running. Here with Kafuzi. Kafuzi, what do you got to say? I'm here for the party. I'm here to see you guys. This is a great turnout. It's a great spot right by the finish line. This is fantastic. This are is one of the best get, things. Are you gonna get a pair of socks? Socks? Are there socks upstairs? The socks were indeed really nice. But even after a diligent search, Carl and I couldn't find any. But that's okay. I wasn't there for socks. I was there to spend time with friends. All right, that was a lot of fun, but I gotta head out because now I'm going to dinner. I'm actually gonna eat today. Look at this guy coming in like a rock star over here. <laughs> How you doing, baby? Hi. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. It is what? 
almost 8 o'clock here on a Saturday in Boston. We got a good crew out here. We're gonna head over to the Adidas Runners Cheer Zone for the BAA 5 -day. Push room just went out. We've got 30 seconds to the start of the race. All right, that was the men. The men are out. Now it's time for the women. Oh, the women went out fast. That was the 5K, 10,000 runners running. Lots of runners still just getting started now, but I gotta take off and head over to the expo because there is a shock drop of the evil ones. They're getting ready for the evil one drop. People should be getting here soon. It'll be interesting to see. here for a while but before I do I want to take a quick lap around because I don't think I'm gonna come back to the expo after this but ooh, there's a lot of people here that's gonna be it from the expo we're gonna head back onto the streets and uh, check out the BAA Mile. Pretty, pretty vicious racing tactics at the finish line there. It's a lot of fun to watch these kids. So cool, they are uh, announcing the girls and then they get to jog out from the finish line over to the start line up here, which is a little bit closer to me. Really cool. Can't imagine being a high school runner and getting that kind of attention. Lead change in the final lap of the girls' mile. And then strong move for third place. And we're gonna get ready for the boys. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty sure I called it at 408 today. <laughs> Out 
After the BAA women's mile, Drew, Brandon, and I got some lunch. I took some selfies, and then I had to split up from the group for a bit. I was supposed to go to an Under Armour event today at one o'clock, and I, I, I think I had time to go after watching the BAA mile races and then grabbing some lunch with Drew and Brandon, but uh, I'm moderating a panel this evening and I really wanted to make sure I went over my notes, the intros, the questions I needed to ask for this evening. And so I felt like I kind of had to like go to my room and do my homework for a little while. So I skipped that event, which is a, a shame because it would have been really nice to see Sharon Locati speak a little bit and learn more about some of what Under Armour was doing. But now, before I go to my panel in the evening, I am gonna go to one other event, and that is a plogging event with my friends Tina Muir and Matt Choi. We're gonna pick up some trash around Boston. This is my second time plogging. Drew and I did this combo jogging trash pickup activity with Tina before the New York Marathon last year, and I really enjoyed it. There were a lot of friends there, and there's something about plogging that I find super relaxing. This is a good look. The things I do for sure. <laughs> Sun is out. We got a good crew here. We got gloves, a garbage bag. Let's find some trash. Last time I did this, I always ended up with very wet trash. That was not pleasant. And not that I'm against picking up wet trash, but I do have to speak at a panel right after this, so I can't get too gross. I can only get mildly gross, not too gross. So I'm not finding too much in the park. I think I need to get back out onto the street. Just left the ply event, picked up some trash, had some great conversations. That's actually really relaxing. I think I said that the last time too. It's a very relaxing way to spend some time, especially on these really hectic weekends. But now I gotta get back to the hotel room, change real quick, and get ready to host that panel. <laughs> The most important work thing that I had to do for the weekend was host the Adidas Boston Celebration Athlete Panel. NCAA legend and now Adidas pro runner Caitlin Tui would be there, as would 204 Kenyan marathoner Cyprian Kotut and Jack Weitz, who was the husband and coach of the late marathon legend Greta Weitz. Not only would I be moderating this panel, but it would also be broadcast as a later but not live episode for the Kafuzi Run Club podcast. The live audience included Adidas executives, product designers, Adidas runners, city captains, and my media colleagues. So I was pretty nervous in front of this crowd. Most of the questions were written for me, so that was both easy and difficult in its own way, but they did let me get in a couple of questions of my own. What are the chances we'd ever see King Tui lining up with a bib for a World Marathon movie? Um, the chances are really high. Um, this is my first marathon weekend, and yesterday I like was walking around, went to pack and pick up, and I was like, man, like I really wish I had a bib here. Like, <laughs> someone give me a pair of shoes. Like, I want to race. Um, it's just really cool, like seeing the community and um, everyone's just enjoying their time in Boston. It's an amazing city. So hopefully down the road I could participate um, because I really want to. It seems like a really cool opportunity and event. Well, that's fantastic here. I know you just made a lot of running fans very happy with that answer. Uh, speaking of racing shoes, though, Cyprian, I, I can't let you guys off the stage without asking you some shoe questions. Cyprian, what are you going to be racing in on Monday? I will be racing on Evo. All right. Wow. Well, one other question, since I've got a Norwegian coach here. Uh, can I get a quick opinion from you on double thresholds? 
Yeah. Uh, you know, so that because uh, I will be so modest to say that that's the Norwegian model. It takes a lot of monitoring, we spend a fortune on lactar testing, but um, yes, it works. Afterwards, there was dinner and beverages, and it was nice to just relax. Adidas also showed me a secret room full of shoes that I can't tell you about yet. From there, a few of us went to second dinner with Tracksmith, and we got lost somewhere around Fenway. But we eventually found it and had some good conversations over a good meal. Good morning. It is a little bit before 8 a.m. on Sunday, Boston Marathon weekend. We're getting ready to go to the Adidas Runner Shakeout. Drew is here shivering. Valerie's here. Ed's here. Tenisoto. Brazil's in the house. We got Fino over there. Miley's You're running via house here. Everybody's here. Look at that. Ashley's over here somewhere too. We're gonna go say hi to some friends. yesterday for the panel, but not set up for a uh, shakeout run today. I think what we're going to do is, we're all warming up in here, and then we'll head outside because it's real cold, so it makes sense. It's pretty cool. Adidas had managed to assemble so many of my friends, and it looked like they had a really great event planned but I didn't have time to stick around because I wanted to visit my friends at Belief in the Run. Hey, how's it going? So we're here at the Believe in the Run shakeout. It's, it's wild, there's a, lot, there's a lot of people here. I can't hear anything, even though Thomas has a microphone. I think they're gonna be heading out soon, but whew, they got a good turnout today. These hats are great. There's a lot of crossover between my audience and Believe in the Run's audience. And on this day, their shakeout was supposed to start at ASICS at 8.30, and my shakeout was just next door with Rabbit at 9. So the crowds were already pretty thick when I got there, and so selfie time started pretty much right away. Eventually, the Believe in the Run shakeout took off for their run, and much of the crowd left. But we still had a pretty sizable group of our own for the Rabbit Boston shakeout. Yo, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we gotta do that one more time. Yeah, I didn't have the GoPro going. All right, I'm gonna say yo, and then you guys know what to say after that. You guys ready? Yo! What's going on? All right, guys, thanks everybody for coming out. Kevin's gonna lead us out, like he said. Um, I'll go start out with him, and then I'm going to film all of you guys running past. So if you wanna give a high five, give a wave, get onto the video for this weekend, I'd love to see you guys smiling out there. Thanks everybody for coming out. You're gonna have great weather tomorrow. It's gonna be a great day to have a great day. So I hope you guys race your hearts out tomorrow. Thanks for coming, good to see you. The rabbit pop-up was just a few blocks away from the Charles River Path. So the plan was to get the group to the river, run out for 15 minutes, and then turn around. How far you went depended on how fast you wanted to go. And if we do it this way, everyone gets to run their own shakeout pace and no one gets lost. Kevin would lead from the front and I would make sure no runner was left behind. It was a gorgeous day along the river and we saw so many other groups out there. And then when we returned, there was time for more selfies. People could get a Kofuzi signature logo screen printed onto a rabbit tee. And I think there might've been coffee. 
Thanks to Rabbit for hosting the Kofuzi Run Club. We had a fantastic time. Thanks everyone for coming. And I hope you had as good a time as I did. Then after the shakeout, it was time for lunch. We have uh, made it to the uh, Hoka Papa. Walked over with Mario, Frioli, and Brandon. Man, they got a party over here. So it's kind of a weird setup in here. It's Marathon Sports. Brooks is downstairs. I think Sophie's also downstairs. Hoka's upstairs. And then there's all sorts of other brands that are sprinkled around through here too. So I'm trying to get a feel for it. There's a lot going on up here. Talk to David Laney over at Kraft for a little bit. Laura Green's over there. Laura Green's everywhere. So Garmin booth. There's a Topo booth. You can. Look at everything. And here's a city cafe. Interesting, but it's getting like super crowded. Alexi Pappas is over there with Lar Green, which is super fun, but um, it's making for like gigantic crowds and people are getting mad. So like, I mean, I gotta get out of here. The energy's not great. It's basically like, it's gone from pop-up to like regular expo up here. So like, it's all right, it's good. I like to see that brands are trying, but this is a lot, this is a lot. section up here, okay. I see, this is how we're doing. Sid Baptista is the founder of Pioneers, a Black-owned running apparel brand. And on this particular day, he was proud to show me the front page coverage of the 26 Point True, an unsanctioned race that celebrates the diversity of Boston's neighborhoods. The news printed the root of that race which also happened to be featured in the floor of the Pioneer's space. Tommy Runs first introduced me to Sid at Last Boston, and since then, this brand has taken some very big strides. I'm impressed with how far they've come, and I can't wait to see where Sid and team can take it next. Pioneers pop up now. The space looks great. The new apparel looks amazing. I picked up a couple of things myself. I'm very excited to try those on. Now I gotta get back to the hotel room. I'm gonna be running late, which is embarrassing and rude because I'm gonna be putting on a podcast. Me and Tommy are gonna interview Ben Johnson. Tommy and I are part of the Relay podcast. And we co-host a series called Behind the Running Influencer. We talked with Ben about his Instagram account, his expansion into YouTube, and of course, we talked about his running. Hopefully, this conversation will be available for you to listen to very, very soon. Yep. All right, just finished the interview with Ben. How do you think it went? I think it went great. I think it's probably one of the better interviews we've ever done. I think so. I feel like we're yeah. falling into a nice rhythm here. I feel like we need to be in person with everyone. I think so too. Yeah. But now we're going to track and that's right there. Yeah. Let's do this. Newburgh Street is so busy. I was thinking people would start trying to get off their feet, but maybe it's also because it's a weekend day and it's a holiday tomorrow here in Massachusetts. So this street is lively. 
I got one more place I want to go to before my last event for the night. So I guess I have two more places to go to. Next stop, Bandit. Bandit shop looks fantastic in there. And from what I hear, the week has gone really well for them. We've got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna try and find something to drink or maybe a little snack to eat before I head back to Rabbit for the meet and greet. It wasn't until 5 p.m. on the evening before race day. And by then, busy Newberry Street had definitely emptied out. Also, it started to rain. So there was only a handful of people who stopped by, but on the plus side, I was able to really spend time meeting them, which is something I don't always have time to do on a weekend like this. All right, that's a wrap. Shutting it down at the rabbit pop-up. Meet and greet is over. Oh, I'm exhausted. Gonna grab some food and then hunker down. I don't have to race tomorrow, thankfully, because I'm tired, but I have a lot of work to do. Starting to edit this video, getting everything ready, get the podcast out. And then uh, tomorrow, it'll be race day. Good morning. It is about 10 a.m. Marathon Monday. The race has already started up in Hopkinton, but I'm here down by the finish line. We're getting some special access with our special power bands. We're gonna go by the finish line, check out some action from down there. And then, once the pros come through, we'll start finding some friends. That's the plan of attack for today. We'll see what there is to see. in this room before. This is a special, special VIP. Okay, we gotta get outside. That's where everyone's at. Look at this guy, look at these guys. Hi, how are ya? over the PA system that at 30K, Emma is leading and pushing the pace. That's awesome, but I'm also nervous. Talking with Kara Goucher inside a little bit, and uh, she was saying that the American women really need to be conserving, not doing so much leading, but at a certain point, you got Helen O'Berry in this pack. You can't let her try and out kick you at the end, so you gotta put some distance down, so maybe this is the right time to be making that move. Say Lima's coming in. We made the left. Coming down.
the women come in. It's gonna be dramatic. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. I'm so happy she got her Modelo. Awesome, great work. Right, about time to start looking for some friends to come through. Nothing like Boston. You that's know right, the that's, best. That's right, that's right. Great job, great work. Oh boy! Woo! Let's go get some water! 
Good. You finished. You finished. Great job. All right. That's going to be it for at least a little while. I'm not sure what my plans are yet. Some things are in motion. I might get to do an interview. I might not. We'll see. But in the meantime, I'm going to get some lunch. It turns out I wouldn't get that interview, but that's okay. I've never had the chance to see a marathon finish line quite like this, quite so close before. To see the runners from world elite to non-elite in those first few moments right after they cross the line is one of the best running things I've ever experienced. It was a hot day for running fast, and for most people who have spent years dreaming of running this race, I don't think they got to run the Boston that they dreamed of. But perhaps this is the exact Boston that they needed. For if Boston is supposed to be the pinnacle of marathons, a tough weather Boston is the purest metaphor for running that we could ever ask for.